Hello students, in the previous video I explained about absorption spectrum and action spectrum. Now in this video I am going to give you the concepts of red drop and Emerson's enhancement effect which are given by the scientist Emerson by conducting experiments on chlorella that is unicellular green alga. Okay, let's study these experiments, Emerson's experiments which are conducted on chlorella and based on these experiments, he gave these concepts, red drop and Emerson's enhancement effect. Okay, so Emerson's experiments. Experiments conducted by Emerson. So Emerson studied the effect of monochromatic light of different wavelengths on the photosynthetic activity of chlorella. So he studied the effect of... Emerson studied the effect of monochromatic light of different wavelengths of different wavelengths on the photosynthetic activity of chlorella light of different wavelengths on the photosynthetic activity of chlorella photosynthetic activity of chlorella which is unicellular green alga okay right so what is monochromatic light here monochromatic light mono means single chromatic colored light so monochromatic light is a light which is with only uh, one colored region one color that is here he used red colored light light of red region okay so what he did in his experiments let's study so in his first experiment in his first experiment he exposed this chlorella to the red light of red light which is above 680 nanometers wavelength so he exposed this chlorella to the red light which is above 6 nanometers, above greater than 680 nanometers wavelength of light, then he observed that there is sharp decrease in the rate of photosynthesis. And he called this phenomena, that is sharp decrease in the rate of photosynthesis as red drop. So he called this phenomena as red drop, that is sharp decrease in the rate of photosynthesis. Next. In his next experiment, second experiment, he exposed this chlorella. He exposed this chlorella, chlorella to the shorter wavelength of red, red light, to the shorter wavelength of red light, shorter wavelength of red light, red light, which is ranging between 650 to 680 nanometers, 680 nanometers. And then also he observed that there is sharp decrease in the rate of photosynthesis. There is sharp decrease in the rate of photosynthesis. Then in his third experiment, in his third experiment, what he did was, he exposed this chlorella to the longer wavelength of red light. To the longer wavelength of red light. Of red light. Okay, so which is ranging between 700 to 720 nanometers of wavelength. So then also he observed that there is decrease in the rate of photosynthesis. There is decrease in the rate of photosynthesis. Then in his last experiment, in his last experiment, that is fourth experiment, he exposed this chlorella, chlorella to the red light, to the red light, both the shorter wavelength of red light and sh uh, longer wavelength of red light simultaneously. So when he, he exposed this chlorella to the red light of both the shorter wavelength and longer wavelength simultaneously, he observed that there is increase in the rate of photosynthesis to about 25% and he called this phenomena as enhancement effect which is also called as Emerson's enhancement effect. Okay, so he exposed this chlorella in his last experiment. He exposed this chlorella to both shorter wavelength of red light and longer wavelength of red light. Shorter wavelength and longer wavelength. What is that shorter wavelength? Which is ranging between 650 to 680 nanometers. And what is that longer wavelength? Which is ranging between 700 to 720 nanometers. So when he exposed this chlorella simultaneously to both shorter wavelength and longer wavelength of red light, what happened? There is increase in the rate of photosynthesis. So photosynthesis, rate of photosynthesis has been 
increased. So he called this effect, he called this phenomena as Emerson's enhancement effect. An enhancement effect which is also called as Emerson's enhancement effect. So after conducting all these experiments, based on the results of these experiments, he concluded that there are two types of photosystems in plants where one photosystem is getting activated at shorter wavelength of red light and the other photosystem is getting activated at longer wavelength of red light. So these two photosystems are, these two photosystems are photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. So in plants there are two photosystems, they are photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. One photosystem is getting activated at shorter wavelength of uh, red light that is P680. Hence it is also called as P680, 680 nanometers wavelength of red light. And the other photosystem that is PS1 is getting activated at longer wavelength of red light that is at 700 nanometers wavelength of red, red light. Hence it is also called as P700. Whereas in case of bacteria, there is only one type of photosystem, only one photosystem is present. In case of blue-green algae, that is cyanobacteria, so cyanobacteria or blue-green algae, cyanobacteria or blue-green algae consists of two photosystems again, that is photosystem 1 and photosystem 2, photosystem 2. So this is all about red drop, Emerson's enhancement effect. And then in the next video, I will be explaining about the details of this photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. What are the components of this photosystem and how they are involved in functioning. So, thank you students.